a power plant that takes away carbon emissions. Say hello to the world's first negative emissions power plant. The geothermal plant in Iceland, in cooperation with Climeworks, will remove an estimated 50 metric tons of carbon dioxide from the air each year. The process works by pulling carbon dioxide from the ambient air using a special filter. The heat from the power plant warms up the filter, which extracts pure carbon dioxide. The gas is then combined with water and pumped 700 meters underground. When the carbon dioxide reaches basaltic rock, it forms minerals. The project is still in the pilot phase, but researchers at Climeworks believe negative emissions plants could be set up around the world. One major obstacle in place is the price. Climeworks estimates it runs around $600 to extract one ton of carbon dioxide from the air. However, if economies of scale can be utilized and more plants open up, that price would drop significantly. Because there are alternatives to oil. Harvesting energy from the sea. Japanese researchers have come up with special technology that can not only capture energy from waves, but also help protect coastlines. A team from Okinawa plans to set up energy harvesting turbines near tetrapods, which are concrete structures placed along the shore to weaken the force of incoming waves and prevent erosion. The turbine has five flexible blades modeled after dolphin fins. It's supported by a stem that's anchored to the seafloor with mooring cables, which, like the blades, is flexible and can bend under pressure. Inside the turbine head is a magnet electric generator, which transforms wave energy into electricity. The electricity is sent back to the shore via cables to feed into the grid. Using turbines on just 1% of Japan's coastline can generate roughly 10 gigawatts of energy, equivalent to about 10 nuclear power plants. Apart from tetrapods, the turbines can also harness electricity near coral reefs. They're built to be safe for marine life, with blade speed carefully calibrated so that any animals caught in them can escape unharmed. The team is currently preparing to install two half-scale model turbines that will power LEDs as part of a commercial demonstration. Endless energy with one coat of paint. Researchers from the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology have invented a novel new paint that can turn surfaces into a hydrogen power generator. Synthetic molybdenum sulfide is a newly developed compound that absorbs moisture and accelerates the splitting of water molecules. When mixed with titanium oxide in paint, the resulting substance is able to produce hydrogen energy from sunlight and water vapor. Hydrogen is one of the cleanest sources of energy and can be used to power vehicles and equipment. The solar paint can generate hydrogen energy in remote locations or hot and dry climates, so long as there is sunlight and moisture in the air. Researchers believe it will take at least five years to come up with the final product, but they're confident that it will be cheap and accessible. Green energy boat set to circumnavigate the globe. A self-sufficient boat run entirely on emission-free energy is soon to set to embark on its maiden voyage around the world. The Energy Observer is a multi-hulled catamaran and former racing vessel that's being converted into a green vessel. It will be equipped with 130 square meters of solar paneling, two vertical axis wind turbines, and two reversible electric motors. Its green technology allows the boat to run emission-free on solar and wind power during the day. The vessel will also be fitted with electrolysis equipment to produce hydrogen from seawater. The hydrogen will be stored in tanks and used to power the boat's fuel cells at night or when there is no sun or wind. The Energy Observer will begin a six-year-long journey in spring, stopping in 50 countries and 101 ports of call as it circumnavigates the globe. The 4.2 million euro vessel is currently sitting in a shipyard in St. Malo, France, awaiting the start of its years-long trip. Los Angeles breaks ground on biogas-fueled power plant. A biogas-fueled cogeneration power plant will soon supply enough energy to power a Los Angeles water reclamation facility. Biogas is gas formed by bacteria and archaea that feed off carbohydrates and fats and produce methane and carbon dioxide as metabolic waste. Biogas can be stored as a source of energy, while the remaining waste can be treated and used as a fertilizer. A co-generation power plant produces steam, heat and electricity simultaneously. It is more efficient than other kinds of power plants and boilers. 
The plants can achieve up to 90% energy efficiency, whereas conventional power plants often achieve just 33%, as most of the heat energy is wasted. The 25 megawatt plant is expected to generate more than 173 million kilowatt hours of electricity a year and up to 70,000 pounds per hour of steam. That's all the energy needed to power Los Angeles' Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant. Using biogas as a power source is also expected to prevent the release of about 100,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide a year, equal to the emissions from around 21,000 cars. The Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant is Los Angeles' oldest and largest water treatment plant. It has been operating since 1894.